On this episode, we are creating UFOs. That's all I want to do. I want to just create UFOs. At first, they're a surprise. Eh? 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 But then, we just vibe with it. Yep. 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 Ho 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 ho. You know, people say that, you know, the German national drink is beer. That's not true. It's actually Apfelsaftschorle, which is apple juice spritzer. Um, hi, I'm Christian. This is Lazy Devs Academy and we are creating <laughs> apple juice spritzer. <laughs> and also we're creating a shmup. Um, and mm, we created a little editor and that other editor is supposed to allow us to spawn things. But uh, now we, we have a huge challenge in front of us on this episode. And that challenge is to, we, you see those, those rectangles? These are uh, enemies. These are supposed to be enemies, but they're not supposed to be rectangle enemies. These are supposed to be UFOs, right? So our goal today is to replace those rectangles with the actual UFOs from our game. That is a bit of a challenge. I'm, I'm gonna tell you why. One of my favorite quotes from Carl Sagan, from the 70s scientist Carl Sagan, is if you want to make an apple pie from scratch, you first have to invent the universe. <laughs> and I love that quote. Um, there's different ways of interpreting this, like using it in different ways. The, the way I, it fits to our situation here is that, you know, there's a lot of assumption going into creating an apple pie from scratch. It kind of like assumes that already apples exist and the universe exists and so forth. And by the way, apples again, right? So creating things from scratch, like it's very easy to say like, oh, let's make an apple pie from scratch. But there's just like whole things, whole huge universe that is built on top of that thing. And it's the same thing here. Uh, sure, just make a UFO, but now we have to think about all the systems that drive the UFO that actually make the UFO finally appear on the screen and all those systems are systems that you have to bring into the editor We have to combine all those systems in our editor to make those UFO appears and ooh, it's gonna be a lot of systems Let us start adding those systems So uh, I'm gonna actually open up a folder next to me uh, You're not gonna see this, but uh, you're gonna see the results in a second here so let me, let me think about all the systems that need to be here. First of all, um, well, a UFO UFO is an enemy and we have an nlib system that is kind of like the library of the enemies that we're having. We definitely have to have this in our editor. But the nlib also references uh, animations, right? The the way the enemy is looking is just saved as an animation. So we need to add the anilib.txt. That's also something we need to add. And then the animations themselves reference our sprite system. So we also need to add this. Uh, what was it? My SPR. So yeah, three systems I need to add just to make a single UFO appear. Oof. Yeah, let me open up a little a little text file uh, up here, and because we're gonna go go pillage, we're gonna go through um, through our cow shmup. We're gonna grab our some nice juicy functions that we're gonna just reuse, right? Uh, this is the moment where all people would be like, "Oh man, just create your own libraries and so forth." But nah, nah. All right, so we definitely want to have the MSPR function. That's something that we absolutely need to paste in here because that's the thing that will actually draw the thing. Um, I'm going to actually copy this function out. That's, that is the one to um, um, draw a collision box because maybe we're going to need it, right? Uh, we definitely, with Split2D, already have a collision detection. No, I'm not sure we need that. But I do want to get this draw OBJ, draw object, and the sick sec. We want to get this one also out. We want to probably copy them into our editor. All right, back into Skedit, and let's put these bad boys in our tools. Let's just copy all this stuff in. 
we're going to think about about how and where we're going to use it later. All right, so we do we can draw a my SPR, and I'm I'm thinking of just like rushing to the to the finish line right away and just like getting the first getting the first frame from the animation right and just like putting it on the screen just to see something on the screen. How about we we try that right? So here. Uh, where we're rect filling, we're not going to rect fill uh, anymore. Those those days are over. So first of all, let us get the enemy. So local local n equals um, n lib uh, the schedule uh, two. The second entry in the schedule that is the number of the enemy that we're spawning. So we're getting that number, and we're getting the corresponding enemy. Now I have some notes open up here in a, in, a, in a side window because I had to look this up. So now when you have the enemy, you have the enemy data set. Then I think the first entry in that enemy data set, that is going to be the number of the animation. So let's get the animation. So local, local ani, that's the animation. That's going to be n square bracket one. So the first entry is the number of the animation. And we're gonna go any lib. We're gonna get the animation library. I'm gonna get uh, the, the animation from the animation library, and the number is gonna be, you know, the number of the enemy. And that is gonna be our animation. And that animation is just now a uh, array. And then we're gonna first get the first entry in that array. This is gonna be a some kind of sprite, and we want to draw that sprite onto the screen. So let's draw uh, MSPR ani square bracket one and then sh x and sh y. Eh! 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 It totally worked. <laughs> easy. Easy for breezy. So easy. Baby, baby easy. Oh, I noticed that our mouse is behind those enemies. We want to actually draw the mouse on top of those enemies. So let us draw the curve at the very end. Yeah, good. So now we have those two enemies that are being, being spawned. Uh, but maybe I want to actually animate the enemies. It's not necessarily, but, you know, we have the animation right here. So why don't we just do it? Um, we could use the, we're not going to actually use the draw obj here. We're going to just use the psych here, the psych function. Um, oh yeah, we're just going to do that bad boy here. Um, so uh, when we're doing the MSPR, we're going to do the psych. Uh, it's going to be any, it's going to be the array. So that's we're going to use the any uh, helper variable that we created. We're going to plug this into the array. The age is going to be t. Uh, we, we are actually not having any t. We have to we have to create a t variable first. And the animation speed is going to be um, the second entry in the enemy array. We got saving the animation speed in the enemy array uh, at the second entry. So yeah, that should uh, do the animation. Just want to make sure that we actually have the t variable. We we we're not counting the frames in the editor, but we should. Uh, so we start at zero and here t plus equals one, like so. It totally works. <laughs> so, okay, that's going to be it. <laughs> Let's go to the doggy zone. Okay, so, so far so good. Now we have some enemies that we see here. That's pretty sweet. There's some problems coming up. This is going to be a tr tricky editor. I, I will tell you right away. Um, there is one big issue is that um, right now, the way we set it up, um, the Y position of an enemy is kind of ambiguous. If you see enemies like this, they're kind of like staggered, like one is a little bit higher than the other, right? Um, this could mean two things, and we're not quite sure which one of these is. It could be that both of these enemies are spawned at the same time, just at slightly different positions off screen, and then they you know move down. Or it could mean that they're both spawned at the same position vertically, but at slightly different um, moments in time. Now, in this case, it's actually the second part. 
But again, the way we visualize this, it's kind of not really clear which one of these two it is. Now, if the enemies were kind of like moving with the background, if they were like static background enemies, it wouldn't actually matter. It wouldn't actually make no difference. But if the enemies are actually have like their own trajectories and brains and so forth, this will actually do, do this will this will make a difference. Um, but you know, we're just gonna ease ourselves into into this problem uh, in an organic fashion. Maybe something I would like to try out is what if I just can click and spawn new enemies, and we're gonna see what other problems crop up and how we can deal with them. So we're just gonna I'm just gonna assume that when I'm spawning an enemy, I'm always spawning it, let's say minus eight pixels. Off screen and and everything else we're gonna calculate you know based on the mouse clicks okay right so let us go in an update function and we just gonna do like little test thing we're gonna do like if CLKL that's the left click then so we clicked and that means we want to now spawn an enemy at the mouse position um, so yeah let, let's do this so we're gonna go local equals, uh, I'm going to create a new sh, um, and first of all, uh, sh, uh, um, the second entry in the sh, that's going to be the enemy type, it's always going to be the UF4 for now, later on maybe we're going to have, we, can, we have to figure out a way of how we can say to an enemy like you are now this type of enemy and so forth, but for now we don't have too many enemy types anyway, uh, I just want to create UFOs all the time. That's all I want to do. I want to just create UFOs. Um, uh, one, that's going to be the, um, the timing. Now, this one is tricky. I'm not quite sure how to do the timing yet. Well, it's definitely going to be something like scroll, right? Minus uh, the mouse position. Mouse Y. We're gonna actually see if this, this works. We're gonna actually add this and then we're gonna see where the enemy appears based on where we clicked. And if the enemy doesn't appear at where we clicked, then we have to maybe do some other stuff. And then um, three is gonna be mouse X. And then four, well, we set four, eight pixels off screen, but for now let's, let's go with zero pixels. That will make the math a little bit easier. And we're gonna add this to the schedule. Like this, so that will just create a mouse thing. And because of the uh, groundwork that we did, the way we do a CLKL, it will only um, be true for one frame, the first frame that we press. So we're not going to create accidentally multiple uh, multiple enemies. Uh, let's see if this works. Oh, it totally works. Now the X position is not quite right because of. You guessed it, X scroll. <laughs> so uh, X scroll. Let's try that. Yep, yep, yep. Ho, 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 ho. This is working really nice. I like it. So now we can just spawn enemies. Isn't that great? Isn't that the best? Uh, something I would maybe do here is, uh, so I want to now spawn them off screen so they do not appear at the top edge of the screen, so they actually fly in. So let's let's do a minus eight. And if we do that, then they don't quite appear where I clicked. So I have to, um, on the schedule, I need to actually do a minus eight. Let's try that. Or plus eight. I'm not exactly sure how it could. Okay, now the minus eight now. Okay, good. Something to keep in mind is, so now the schedule is zero, right? Um, let me spawn an enemy and export this. And then we're gonna go into table. Again, I maybe, maybe should, maybe let's, let's put a table mode switcher, huh? How about that? Yeah, let's do that. So uh, let's go something like, uh, we do have a key. We do always do a key, right? So in the update map, if key equals uh, T for table mode then and that that uh, allows us to switch to the the table mode because sometimes we just want to see the table <laughs> right so T ha 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 baby 
So, but you see now the, the, the third entry there, right? You see how it has a negative um, schedule. So that's a bit of an issue there. You know, we, we go, what, want to make sure that when we're spawning enemy at this first screen that we're not actually, you know, uh, not spawning enemy there. We don't start a game with enemies already on the screen because that means that they would have negative spawn value, which means they're going to spawn immediately when the game begins, but all at once. It's, it's going to be a mess. Uh, by the way, let's make it so we can switch back to map mode. Let's get back to map mode. Uh, here. Let's make it so that when we press M in this view, we're going to go, go back to map. Okay. Does that even work? T M. Oh. oh, it doesn't work anymore. I broke it. I broke it. I can do this twice and then it doesn't work anymore. Okay, now it's we're stuck at M. It does. It didn't. Well, I'm not. It's some kind of keyboard interaction thing. I'm not gonna uh, lose my uh, my sleep on this for now. Let's maybe some of you guys have an idea of how this works. And um, I want to move on with other things. I want to actually see how our schedule thing works in the game because there's some problems here. I can already spoil to you. There's gonna be problems. But for now, let's just let's create like a whole bunch of. And we're gonna put them right next to each other, right? We're gonna put them right next to each other, very close, like a very close formation, something like this, because I wanted to show you something. Very close formation. They're all next to each other. Like something, like a whole bunch of enemies that I can just like shoot through, right? Let's export this. Uh, also, but I don't have a way to deleting things, so we're gonna <laughs> spawn with an enemy uh, launching right away. I'm gonna see how this works in, in the game. I'm gonna save this. Load uh, cow schmuck. All right, here's and it, see, it's like, hmm, did you see that? It is, I, I've created an editor, I've created them all together, but they're not launching all together, they're launching in these kind of like waves, like they're not all bunched up together, right? Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird that not, not bunch up together? They should be bunched up together, but they're not. There's a bunch of problems that, that happened here. One major problem that, that happened here is that, um, remember our assumption. Their assumption in the spawning is that the next enemy that's supposed to spawn is, is you know, the next, like the next enemy in a schedule is the next enemy that's supposed to spawn. That is not necessarily the case right now. So if you run this and switch to table mode, uh, look at those numbers. Those numbers are not ordered, right? So 10, 20, but then minus and then 15. So they're, they're out of order. The, the, the schedule is out of order. We need to bring it back into order. So we have to do a little what's called a sorting algorithm. And that's kind of like this, you know, very, very uh, common um, computer science thing where you know you have an array of numbers and you need to bring them back into order. It's something that you do a lot in computer science. There is a whole bunch of algorithms you can, you can apply here. I'm gonna use a very simple algorithm. And you, I mean, honestly, if I do it in my, in, in my everyday programming life, I'm just gonna look it up. Lua or Pico8 sorting algorithm and somebody has a really nice, smart, fast, efficient solar sorting algorithm. Um, but there is one algorithm that I memorized in my head because it's kind of like a very simple algorithm that you always do and that's going to be bubble sort and we're going to do like a little bubble sort here real quick. Um, right, so we're going to call this sort sked. We're going to have a dedicated function called sort sked and before we export, I'm not sure exactly where to do it, but let's do it before we export. Before we export, we're going to do a short, or sort sked. Um, so a bubble sort algorithm. Let me walk you through the bubble sort algorithm. 
It's paint time, baby. Why is the paint? Why, why is every time I launch you paint? Why do you always look so weird? Oh, okay, okay, good. So let me, let us see. Let us, let us assume that we have a bunch of lines, right? We have a bunch of really, really thick lines. We have a line good that goes like this. Can we, can we snap to? Yes, we can. I have like this, like this, like this, and like this, and like this. And we have to bring those lines in order, right? That's what we actually have to do. We have to order those lines according to length. How are we going to do this? Well, again, there's different algorithms. The bubble sort algorithm is a very simple one. That just takes, you know, this first line, and then it takes the next line and compares them to each other. If this says like the first line, let's say the, we're going to have to start with the smallest one and end with the highest one. Uh, it says if these if this one is lo uh, sh shorter if the second one is if so if this one is shorter than this one then it would make them switch places. In this case, it's cool. It's cool. There are they are the same. And if they're the same, then we're gonna go to the next one. We're gonna take this one and this one, and we're gonna see is this one shorter than this one? Yes, it is. In this case, we're gonna make them switch places. And then we continue, is this one shorter than this one? And so forth, then you go through this. Um, and there's different ways of doing it. It's something you can do, like whenever you switch places, you just restart the entire algorithm, or you can make it go to the end. And if there was no switch, then that means they're in order. Uh, there's like different variations of how you do this. But yeah, you just repeat this algorithm until there's no switching anymore. And that means that you've um, sorted this, this thing by, uh, by length, right? Yeah, let's let's just do it. Uh, first of all, um, if, if we don't need that, if schedule is smaller than two, we have less than two things that we don't don't need to go through this algorithm. <laughs> just you know, we're not gonna, probably not going to happen, but just just make sure uh, uh, if schedule is uh, number of sketch is less than two, then we're just going to return. It's fine. Okay, so um, we're going to go four. I equals one to hashtag sked minus one. So we are, this is gonna be the first entry that we're going, going to compare. And um, we always going to be comparing two entries, right? So one and two. So, uh, and the final entry won't have a next entry anymore. So that's why sked minus one. We're going to the second to last entry because the second to last entry will compare the second to last and the last entry with each other. Um, all right. Then, uh, uh, do, it's a do. And in this case, we're going to go um, if sked i, then the one, that is going to be the, the, the entry. If that is uh, greater than sked i plus one, that's the next entry in our schedule. And again, one one is the um, entry one in the schedule in each schedule entry that is the the scroll location at which we are spawning. So if they, these things are out of order, then we have to actually uh, make them switch places. And the way we do this is sked i comma sked i plus one. Well, I mean, okay, sked i equals sked i plus one, right? And then sked i, I plus one equals sked i. Uh, this is a mistake, this don't, won't work. Um, because we are actually, you know, we are putting i plus one into one, so now we duplicated i plus one, and then this is just gonna duplicate it one more time. We just actually deleted one and, and duplicated one. Um, what we want to do is make them switch places. Um, you, there's two ways of doing this. There's like the the boring way, which is kind of like create like helper variable that, and then we're gonna store one in the helper variable, then do the switch, and then bring the one from the helper variable back. So that's like a three-step switch. Um, but in Pico 8, we actually, or in Lua, there's a, actually a cool way. So if you're doing this, I already showed you this before, if you do A and B equals one and two, right? If you do like this double assignment where we're assigning two variables, uh, some values, if you do that, so now A is going to be one and B is going to be two, right? So if you do that, 
Uh, what you can also do here, that's kind of like really nice, is you can actually make them switch because uh, everything happens at the same time. Do, do, those do things are not happening one after each other, those assignments, they're happening at the same time. So you can do something like AB equals BA and then the values of A and B will switch places. You can totally do that. And that's one of the advantages of this kind of weird way of assigning variables at the same time. And we're gonna take totally take advantage of that here because that's exactly what this was made for. So we're gonna go with sked i equals sked, um, sked i and sked i plus one equals sked i plus one and sked i. So this is just like those two schedules, we're gonna switch, make them switch places. That's all it does. Um, also, I want to do like a little helper variable. Um, we're gonna set this switch helper variable to true just so we know that there has been a switch of places that took place uh, because we have to repeat it multiple times now. We have to go through this process as many times until it's no longer the, the, those entries no longer switch places. Um, there is actually multiple ways of doing this. Um, I, I think a, a really cool uh, loop, a type of loop, I'm not sure if we actually ever discussed this. Um, there's a loop called repeat until. So, this, is, this might be new stuff, I'm not sure. So repeat begins the loop. Now there's a whole bunch of stuff that's happening and then um, until closes that loop and until has now a condition that says like, you know, just repeat all the stuff between those two statements until something is true. So until switch equals false, for example. So we're gonna repeat this until we go through this process and switch um, remains false. And if we repeat this process until it remains false, that means that our little um, sorting thing has been successful. <laughs> okay, hopefully I didn't make any mistakes. Let's run this. All right, so here's a table view, right? It's out of order. Well, now we're gonna go export. And now you see it has been ordered. It actually ordered things, right? The negative one comes first and the positive ones come, come last. It's great, it works. <laughs> I'm kind of amazed that it worked <laughs> for the first time. But yeah, that's called a bubble sort. And it's called a bubble sort because kind of like, <laughs> just like to, to put it in your brain. It's called a bubble sort just because like the, the correct values bubble up, right? They kind of like, it's kind of like a fizzly water, kind of like a apple juice spritzer. <laughs> where you know the bubbles are um, the, the correct values bubble up to, to the correct spot. If you watch this at work, you will see you know the, the correct value always goes to the, the right place and they slowly uh, keep going this. It's not an efficient sorting algorithm, but it's one that's easy to program. It's not efficient because you know it will take a while, a couple of loops until it get, gets it right. Uh, there's more efficient ones, but they're more of a brain teaser, I think. And we don't need efficient here. Okay, so now that we uh, have this and you know we sorted it and we exported it, so now it's actually already also written into the file. Isn't that powerful? Isn't that crazy that we just like changed the file with this code? This, this is this is intoxicating. Okay, so let's save this and let's run Kaushma. And let's see if we're gonna get this this clustering. See. Okay, it seems a lot more natural now, right? It seems a lot more natural. There is a swarm of enemies for sure. There is a swarm of enemies approaching me. That I'm not gonna deny this. But it doesn't quite look the way it looks in the editor, doesn't it? Right, we have like this this thing, and but it came out in these, in these ways, right? Like it's, it's not quite, like we don't see exactly this formation we don't see exactly this formation in our game. And we kind of maybe want to do that. If I have like a, let me, let me show you real quick. If I have a formation that goes like this, like a V formation, right? If I have a formation like this, I want to see that V formation in the game, right? Let's run this. So yeah, here's the, the, the swarm that we created. Now comes our V formation. It's way slower. I mean, I see the V formation there, but it's just like they're spaced out a lot more. And yeah, this is something I already teased, um, teased you with, and that is, you know, this editor doesn't take into account how the enemies actually behave. 
And what you see, the actual spawning points are way more compressed. They are kind of like as if you took like the enemy's arrangement or later on the screen and like squished them together. So when you have a formation that looks like this, like this V formation, it's actually in the game, it will be a very elongated formation, even if the enemies are behaving the same. And if the enemies are behaving differently, then it will maybe even com look completely different. Like imagine the enemies are flying sideways or anything that will just like look completely different in the game. So what we actually want to do later when we create the brains is we want to maybe somehow take that brain data and put that in the editor somehow. So we actually, when we scroll through this game, we actually, you know, rewinding the tape of the actual game. So we see the behavior of the enemies here and we can actually create like a V formation, for example in here in the editor yeah so that's something that we absolutely have to schedule we have to keep in mind um, but we have to figure out the brains of the enemies first for now let us go to the doggy zone i think it's a good time for the doggy zone right so the doggy zone um we we can create enemies so that's cool um we also made the, sure that export works that's good um i want to uh, work a little bit more on the ui i want to actually figure out exactly how the ui works Here's a couple of questions that I want you to figure out. Question number one. I want to delete things. I had situations where I had too many enemies. I want to actually get rid of enemies. How do I delete enemies in a very nice and simple fashion? Question number two. What if I want to create different types of enemies? What if I want to change the type of enemies that I created? Because we have actually like the big chunky enemy as well. So how do I create uh, different types of enemies? And then maybe three, I want to maybe have a move an enemy. I want to be able to click on an enemy and say like, okay, nudge it left and right and so forth. How do I move enemies around so they, I can position them exactly the way I want? These are the challenges for the dog zone. And now let us move on to this part at the end of each episode where I will say a big thank you, huge shout out. Thank you so much for making this show possible to all the people who are supporting this show. You can support this show on coffee.com slash lazydevs and as a little bonus you get uh you know get some perks for example you get to see new episodes early yes 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 so the schedule editor is coming along uh, we need to just polish up some of the ui but it's things are coming together and we are starting to understand our challenge more and more see you next time around guys bye bye